Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie a, a woolly bugger variant. Uh, my friend Dave came up with it. It's a pretty basic pattern and um, there are a lot of flies out there that look like it. It's more the way we fish it that uh, is different. Um, he was inspired by the wacky rig uh, that's used for bass fishing in conventional tackle. And he wanted to get that same kind of vibration look out of a fly that we could use dead drift uh, you know, just drift it down to um, smallmouth when they're in that kind of fussy mood, they don't want to really chase anything. We just dr dead drift along the bottom and we pick up fish doing it. And it's proven to be quite effective. We do it in a number of different colors. Uh, I'm just going to do an olive variant today, but you can do it in black. Um, you could do it in chartreuse, you could do it in purple. A number of different colors you can do it in and they'll all work. So uh, let's look at the material that we're going to use. My thread is Olive 6 aught. My body is uh, Olive Chenille. The rubber legs on this fly are going to be uh, sort of a, a black and chartreuse. And the tail is going to be made out of Olive Marabou. Oh yes, I should mention the hook is a standard wet fly hook and we have a gold bead or cone at the front. It could be either a cone or a bead, whatever you like to use. But you do need a little bit of weight to get it down. So we'll wind on our thread. Now we're going to put on our marabou, just a, a, a couple of uh, loose wraps. I'm just going to pull it to the right length. Roughly you want a tail that's roughly the length of the hook shank. You don't want too much of a tail. Then just wind that back. Wind it back to where the hook bend starts to uh, curve. The next step is to tie in the rubber legs that go alongside the uh, hook shank. I have to just bring make sure the tail is on top. And I'm just going to put in a couple of wraps here just to hold that in place. Straighten it up. Okay, just lay these on, make sure it's the same length. And just use a pinch loop. Put a few wraps in. Make sure they're the right length and that will leave us with a couple of tags that we'll just cut off. Okay, now we'll tie in our chenille and you'll notice that I have trimmed off a bit of the chenille so I can have a tying in point. I'll pull my rubber legs back together and I'll just put some soft wraps right at the very back and I'll bring this forward and I'll just put in a half hitch here and bring in my bobbin holder across. Okay, now we'll just wrap this forward. Make sure your chenille is close together. Those little tag ends will go underneath. They won't be a problem. Now leave yourself a bit of a gap there. And I'll put one wrap right behind the chenille just to hold it in place because we don't want our chenille uh, to come loose while we're trying to put our rubber legs on. We want it to stay put. Now I'll take my other piece of rubber leg and I'm going to cut it in half too. And I'll turn that towards me, put it halfway, make a nice soft pinch loop in there. Position it. I'll do the same with the other leg. Now I'll just, sometimes you shift a little so you just give them a little tweak like that. Make sure they're right. Uh, see, as soon as I start pulling on the thread, they'll start to move. So that's normal. So sometimes you have to hold them in place. Put a few wraps in there. Now just pull those back out of the way and bring your thread forward. There we go. Now the next step is kind of important. I'm going to use some glue here. And uh, I'd want this uh, to stay put when I'm fishing it. So putting a little glue on it keeps those rubber legs in place. Now I just wrap my chenille around and moving the rubber legs. That glue sometimes takes a moment to set and that gives you a moment to um, a chance to adjust the legs. Now I'm just going to put a wrap or two in front of that. Now when that glue sets that front piece of chenille and the rubber legs aren't going to move so it makes the fly quite durable. 
I'm finding put a little bit of glue on the uh, end of the chenille works wonderful. Now, when you cut the chenille off, make sure you don't cut your thread or cut the legs. Let me trim that off. Now, th these legs are too long. And what we have happening in with legs that are too long is the current will sweep them back and they won't vibrate. So what we need to do is trim them to about half an inch. So now that spiky look to the legs will vibrate in the water, especially when it's dead drifted. And we're going to get a, a, a much more uh, fishy or a live look to the fly. So the last step is just a whip finish and make sure you don't snag the rubber legs when you're doing this. Let's maneuver them around the legs. I'm going to trim your thread off. So there's our little fly. Very, very simple. Uh, you don't need anything fancy for smallmouth. And remember, this fly works with a, a dead drift approach. So we normally cast it upstream. We let the, the fly just drift downstream. And then after uh, it uh, is come tight, we, we let it swing out at the end of the drift. And we must maintain tension with the fly. We must maintain contact with the fly because often with this kind of presentation, the smallmouth hit very, very lightly. You may not feel them. So keeping a tight line and uh, contact with the fly, let it dead drift for as much as possible, then swing it out of the end and <laughs> hang on because the smallmouth love it. And we've got some pretty big fish using this technique. So remember, you can uh, tie this fly in olive, black, brown, purple, chartreuse. They all work. Bead head, cone head, doesn't matter, whatever your preference. Just tie it on a heavy gauge wet fly hook and you're in business. So go fishing with it and have lots of fun and catch lots of smallmouth. Peter Charles, Hook for Life Fly Fishing. Enjoy.